In this video, we're covering a recent tragedy and the unfolding tension it has brought to the Boflong Township in South Africa. The community is mourning the loss of the Biso Maphike, a 54-year-old shop owner and well-known advocate for local entrepreneurs, who was fatally shot on November 11th, 2024. His death has sparked significant anger and concern, especially since it came only a few months after he survived an earlier assassination attempt. The Biso was a prominent figure, beloved by many for his dedication to improving opportunities for small business owners in the township. His untimely death has left the community shaken and searching for justice. Two Somalian nationals have been identified by residents as suspects in this tragic case, with community members pointing to an alleged online comment by one of the suspects that read, he will go to heaven soon. This statement, combined with behavior observed by community members, has led many to believe these individuals may be responsible for the Biso's murder. The situation has also highlighted ongoing frustrations within the community regarding what they perceive as a lack of effective action from the South African Police Service, or SAPS. Despite residents providing what they believe to be strong evidence, including witness testimonies, they claim that the police have yet to make any arrests or even carry out a thorough investigation into the suspects. Now, let's take a closer look at the background and why this case has created such intense emotions. The Biso Map Hike was not just any shop owner. He was a vocal advocate for local businesses in Boflong. His store was more than a business. It was a meeting point, a place where he encouraged local entrepreneurship and fought for fair treatment of township business owners. The Biso had long been committed to challenging practices that he felt were unfair to South African shop owners, who sometimes struggled to compete with foreign-owned businesses in the area. This advocacy made him both respected and, unfortunately, a target. When he survived an earlier attack, it underscored the risks he faced. But his persistence and passion kept him going, despite the threats. For the residents of Bofalong, the Biso's death represents more than the loss of a community leader. It's a symbol of their frustrations with the justice system. Many residents feel that their safety concerns are not being taken seriously, especially when it comes to crime involving foreign nationals. This has led to growing resentment and anger, which, in the Biso's case, seems to have reached a tipping point. Local community members have shared their anger openly, expressing disappointment in the saps for what they perceive as a lack of action. They feel that, despite providing clear evidence, their voices are going unheard. One resident summed up the feeling by saying, we've given the police all the evidence they need, but they are ignoring us. How can we feel safe when the killers walk free? For many in the community, this question cuts to the heart of their concerns. They worry that without swift justice, violence could escalate further. Another resident emphasized that this issue goes beyond the Biso's death, saying, this is not just about the Biso, it's about the future of our community. We need justice. This statement underscores a deep fear that the lack of accountability could lead to even more problems, possibly pushing some residents to take justice into their own hands if they feel that official channels continue to fail them. It's important to acknowledge the police's perspective here as well. Gauteng SAP spokesperson Colonel Demakatso Sayo has addressed these concerns, acknowledging the community's frustration but denying that the SAPs is ignoring their evidence. According to Colonel Sayo, the police are actively investigating the case and are aware of the claims made by community members. She urged residents not to take matters into their own hands, warning that such actions could lead to further harm and potentially unlawful retaliation. The Independent Police Investigative Directorate, or IPID, has reportedly taken note of the case as well and is monitoring the situation to ensure proper procedure is followed. This oversight by IPID indicates that there is some effort to ensure accountability in the handling of this case. However, the community's trust in law enforcement remains strained. The reality is that tensions between local South African communities and foreign-owned businesses have been a recurring issue, often fueled by competition and economic hardships. In many townships, local shop owners feel that foreign-owned shops have certain advantages that make it hard for locals to compete. These tensions sometimes escalate into misunderstandings or conflicts as locals feel pushed to the margins of their own communities. The Biso Mafike's case is a particularly tragic example of what happens when these tensions become personal and violent, 
leading to a profound sense of loss for those who saw him as a protector of local rights and a true community leader. The anger over Thabiso's death and the police's response reflects deeper issues within Bafalong and beyond. It's a situation that reveals a lack of communication and trust between residents and law enforcement, which is only worsening community relations. Community leaders have made public statements urging residents to stay calm and work with law enforcement. They recognize the importance of channeling this anger in constructive ways, fearing that vigilante actions could lead to even more violence and instability. However, as frustration builds, it becomes harder to keep emotions in check, especially for those who knew Thabiso personally and want to see swift justice in his case. Moving forward, this case highlights the urgent need for improved communication and cooperation between communities and the SAPs. Many residents are calling for the police to provide more updates and transparency in their investigation process to reassure the public that the case is being taken seriously. For a grieving community, every day without clear progress feels like a painful reminder of what they perceive as neglect. If the SAPs can address these concerns more openly, it may help rebuild some of the trust that has been lost in Bafalong. For the Map Hike family, friends, and the larger community, this is not just about one individual's tragic death, but about a larger call for justice, safety, and the hope for a future where people feel secure in their own neighborhoods. As we conclude, it's crucial to consider the broader implications of this case. It raises questions about the effectiveness of law enforcement in handling crimes within vulnerable communities and highlights the need for strong, transparent communication to prevent further division and unrest. For now, the community waits, hoping that justice will be served and that the Biso's legacy as a defender of township businesses will inspire a safer, more unified Bafalong. What do you think about the SAPS's response to this case? Should they be doing more, or are they handling it as best as they can given the circumstances? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to stay updated on stories like this. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.